season and the Adahi Tanu program. Cars Plus, reminding you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Coming up on Prime Time, a 70-year-old man is dead after a car crash in Talafofo over the weekend. Plus, another anonymous letter was released to the media, this time addressing concerns with leadership in the Guam National Guard. Our Chris Barnett has full details. And Nestor Lacanto reports on the informational briefing held by the speaker regarding the military buildup. Good evening, everyone, and half a day. Tragedy, unfortunately, leads our broadcast as a family and an island is mourning the loss of a loved one gone too soon as Guam's southern roads have claimed yet another life. Chris Barnett has more. Nario Sanguiza was a husband, father and grandfather. He enjoyed golfing, spending time with his grandchildren and his job as a taxi driver. He died as a result of Saturday afternoon's crash on Route 4A in Talafofo. His family telling KUAM he was on his way to pick up his granddaughter from her rugby match in Talafofo, riding with him in the car, his daughter and her three children. Sanguiza driving this Toyota Venza, the Venza, slamming into a concrete utility pole. Shortly after, Sanguiza's wife, Vicky, who was in the Philippines at the time of the crash, got a phone call she says she'll never forget. And then I got a call from my brother-in-law that something happened and that's it. And he called me that he was not able to make it. Ms. Sanguiza tells KUAM doctors told her that her husband suffered a heart attack, but it's not clear if that was the cause of the crash or a result of losing control of the vehicle. Meanwhile, her daughter, Ana Katrina Cruz, and her three children are still hospitalized, but Mrs. Sanguiza says their injuries are not life-threatening. She tells us Nario was a longtime taxi driver, most recently driving for Resort Taxi. He also worked as a warehouse man for FHP and for Fletcher Pacific Construction, too. His wife tells us Nario Sanguiza was a hard worker who always provided for his family. Just to support us, give us everything what we need, and especially the grants, they're so spoiled to him. He give, he give everything what we need. He's very supportive. So we're going to be missing him a lot, and I don't know what to do without him now. She said her husband's friends always spoke highly of him and couldn't find anything bad to say about him. He's a very loving, supportive, and everything. He's a perfect husband, father, grandfather. He's a good person. He's really a good, good person. <laughs> Meanwhile, police spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapao tells KUAM wet road conditions likely played a factor in the crash which is still being investigated by the Guam Police Department. Over the years, several people have died along that stretch of road, and Tapao says locals know how dangerous it is. And it really is the surface, the surface when it rains and everything, it becomes slick. Meanwhile, Sanguiza's grandson, Drew, said his grandpa was a safe driver and Gov yes. Guam should do more to improve road conditions. They should fix all the roads to, to be more safe for others so that uh, not, nothing like this can ever happen again. Vicky and Nario Sanguiza married for 40 years. They have four children, three daughters and a son. Vicky holding back tears as she shared how just last week her husband was here in this house. And today she's making funeral plans for him. What hurts for her is that she wasn't able to say goodbye to him. So we asked her what she would say to her husband if she had the chance. I know you're still around. I'm sorry I wasn't that baby. I was not with you, in. so I'm sorry for everything. I love you very much. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> for Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. All right, Chris, thanks so much. And we move on in our, in our rundown as best we can. As traffic investigators with the Guam Police Department's Highway Patrol are currently investigating another accident that took place Friday evening. GPD 
GFD's spokesperson Kevin Riley says just after 10 p.m. units responded to the Assen Beach Park for an auto pedestrian incident with serious injuries. The patient involved was transported to the nearby Naval Hospital Guam just before 1030. The condition of that patient is unknown at the moment. Elsewhere tonight, as we reported on Facebook earlier today, another anonymous letter has made the rounds. And this time, soldiers in the Guam National Guard are sounding off about what they say is a hostile working environment. Once again, here's Chris Barnett. And another one. The latest anonymous letter being sent to media and making the rounds on WhatsApp comes from men and women in uniform serving in the Guam National Guard. The six-page letter first mentions an Office of Complex Investigations National Guard Bureau Command Climate Survey conducted to, quote, determine the validity of the transition report issues raised by the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration. The administration's trans report said guard morale was low. There was a lack of women in senior leadership and sexual harassment, favoritism and a hostile work environment were the norm in the guard. The letter says, we suspect the OCI report will invalidate the transition team's report and will also identify problems with the current leadership and the hostile work environment they have created. The letter goes on to detail alleged problems with two off-island hires. Adjutant General Esther Agagi hired shortly after taking over his tag. The letter says Colonel Corey Gacano and Lieutenant Colonel Tasleen Panton were hired, quote, over more qualified and seasoned officers, and that both officers lack leadership and experience required for their positions and have demonstrated a self-serving attitude toward the soldiers and airmen who call Guam home. Colonel Gacano is Agagi's chief of staff, and Lieutenant Colonel Panton is her director of personnel. It also alleges Gacono directed Panton to make changes to and update the Guard's standard operating procedures for hiring and retention, changes the writers of the letter say are in violation of federal policies. The Guard anonymous letter is the latest in several that have been sent to Island Media. Letters from employees at the Guam Visitors Bureau and the Department of Corrections have also made the rounds. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. And as a corollary to the story, Chris adds that the Guard is acknowledging having received a copy of the anonymous letter sent to the governor, adding, quote, We are working closely with Adeloupe and a formal response is forthcoming. Speaking of our chief executive, Governor Leon Guerrero has released her action report on the troubled Department of Corrections. This follows a shakeup at that agency, prompted in part by an anonymous letter from DOC staffers complaining about their working conditions. Last week, if you recall, interim Deputy Director Joe Carvalito was given operational control of the agency, and on Friday, Corrections Director Samantha Brennan abruptly resigned. Today's release of the report follows meetings last week between Governor Leon Guerrero and corrections officers and command staff. Their top concerns were a shortage of personnel and the resulting danger to officers while on duty. Those officers also complained about management's lack of support and appreciation, as well as a lack of compassion for their needs and family obligations. Command staff complained about deteriorating facilities, a lack of leadership training, and a lack of freedom to do their work. Governor Leon Guerrero's short-term plan includes hiring between 40 to 60 new officers by the end of this year, establishing a memorandum of understanding with Public Works for facility repairs, and to pay outstanding overtime. One of her long-term plans, she says, is to establish a task force with which to evaluate the need for a new prison. And another island headline tonight, it's another case of bringing in drugs through the mail. 39-year-old Franklin Fernandez was arrested last week after he was caught with meth apparently sent from the state of Arizona. Guam Customs Contraband Enforcement Team and U.S. Postal Inspection Services members intercepted a package containing 137 grams of meth, court documents state. A controlled delivery was set up to an address down in Talafofo where a man accepted the package and took it to a home in that same village. Now, once the package was open, agents found in, moved in and found Fernandez along with his wife, 38-year-old Daniel Fernandez, inside the home. Clue spray, it says, applied to the drugs was found on both the husband's and wife's hands. Franklin Fernandez was charged with importation of drugs as well as possession of drugs with the intent to deliver and possession of a controlled substance. Danielle Fernandez was charged with drug possession as well related to a pipe found in her purse during a traffic stop. Well, Edward Chrysostomo and Jerome St. Nicholas will enter a plea agreement next week in other news as the two defendants were charged in the 2017 major Department of Corrections contraband scheme. Chrysostomo and St. Nicholas are the two defendants remaining to enter guilty pleas along with defendant Liana Cabrera, yet Cabrera still has yet to make a court appearance as an outstanding bench warrant. Again, Judge Anita Sokol is asking defense counsel Anna Marie Gale where her client is. Gale said, quote, I'm having a hard time controlling her, Your Honor. 
Since there has been no answer of Cabrera's whereabouts, Judge Chicola severed her case because all other co-defendants are fulfilling their terms and still awaiting sentencing. Sentencing has been scheduled for Christmas Eve. In other news tonight, the, the Guam Police Department is still looking for the public's help for information leading to the arrest of a man accused of sexually assaulting a young girl up in Dedido. GPD spokesman Sergeant Paul Tapal tells KUM News that Guam's finest continue to investigate the case and that a picture circulating on social media seen here of a man being called a suspect is inaccurate. There is a picture of a male individual that, you know, had been circulating on social media. He has been cleared by our investigators. Our DART investigators met with that individual that um, was depicted in that picture. Uh, they, they did clear him. And, you know, we continue to ask the community, should anybody have any information or may have seen or saw something uh, that was suspicious or unusual at that time, to give us a call and we can, we can work on those leads. Now, the assault happened last Monday but was not reported to police until two days later. Preliminary findings indicate the girl was walking home from Papa's store on San Antonio Street in Dedido when she was grabbed from behind and pulled into the jungle. The unknown suspect then sexually assaulted her, but the girl was able to escape. Mayor Melissa Savars cleared the jungle areas on private property in the area as a result of the assault. Now, we did ask Sergeant Tapao if police have conducted at this time any more interviews and have any potential suspects. With all the tip information that we've been getting, you know, our guys have been really moving forward with the, um, you know, with the leads and follow-up. So there's a lot of in interviews that were being, are being conducted by our DART investigators. Now, GP is asking anyone with any sort of information relative to this case to bravely come forward. You can call Police Dispatch at 472-8911 or check out Guam Crime Stoppers online tip line. That URL is guam.crimestoppersweb.com. To the fire department now, firefighters with GFD spent much of Friday evening extinguishing a blaze that involved multiple shipping containers at Green Guam Recycling up here in Dedido. According to nearby occupants, containers were being used as a residence as well as storage. GFD spokesman Kevin Riley says the initial call was received just after 6 p.m. with several units responding, adding there were no forced evacuations in the surrounding areas, yet residents were advised to close their windows and doors to prevent smoke from entering their homes or move to an area upwind until the fire was completely secured. And also tonight, representatives from multiple GovGuam agencies testified today on the impact of the multi-billion dollar military buildup. The briefing was called by Speaker Tina Munya barnes ahead of another meeting tomorrow, with the DOD. Nestor Lacanta was there and files this next report. According to Guam Military Buildup Executive Director Vera Toposna, everything remains on track with peak construction activity expected to begin in 2021. What we know today is that the cost of the buildup remains at $8.7 billion and a total of 5,000 Marines relocating to Guam with 3,300 of those Marines on a rotational basis. Meanwhile, Governor Leon Guerrero and Admiral Menoni convened a military civilian coordinating council earlier this month. And to assure a smooth process, Gov Guam says it plans to hire about 187 personnel at a cost of $10 million to work through the peak years till 2028. Former Senator Carlotta Leon Guerrero is the governor's chief advisor for military and regional affairs. The governor feels that this is a federal expense uh, that all of the justification for these employees will be because of their extra workload working on uh, military federal projects. Adeloupe says it will continue to push for the return of excess federal land, long a flashpoint here as the military controls at least a third of the island. We are in discussions regarding that negative, which provides an opportunity for our governor to make requests for the return of excess lands. This request is currently being reviewed at the highest levels of the Department of Defense, and our local team is actively, actively engaged in those discussions. More than half a dozen agency heads attended the briefing. Key among them was Labor Director David De La Sola, who says there are now more than 1,100 foreign workers here, the first time since 2016 they've passed the 1,000 mark. Customs and Immigration has cracked down on the H-2B program, but Congress provided an exemption through the defense budget specifically for military projects. I know that we are still looking for a more permanent solution than the one that we have now. And uh, everybody is, the governor, the admiral, they're all looking at possible other solutions, but um, nothing is new. 
as far as the last couple of years. On Tuesday, the legislature will hear from the military. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Lacanto. We're going to take a quick break, but keep on watching and keep streaming us because primetime will continue right after this. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. The Madsen USO Rock and Run for Our Heroes is coming back to the Guam Museum Skinner Plaza on Saturday, December 14th. Check out our fast and easy registration online at guam.uso.org. We'll be rocking out with music throughout the course. Lace up your shoes, bring your family and friends, and rock and run for our heroes on December 14th. Sign up today online at USO Chimon Bay and the Royal Orchid Hotel or at USO Anderson. Special thanks to title sponsor Matson and all supporters of our USO Rock and Run for Our Heroes 5K. We value relationships because when we commit, I love you guys until you're 80, until you're 90, until you're 100, forever. We are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter. Because when we commit to relationships, we never stop caring. Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. Why would anyone run a race? Is it about finishing a 5K in under 20 minutes? Beating your personal best? Or running over 26 miles for a marathon. It's more than a race of time, speed, or distance. It's about being in a destination unlike any other. It's about pushing yourself and being yourself in a community of over 4,000 runners with people to cheer you on. It's because it starts here and ends here. Run in paradise. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. The National Weather Service is monitoring a tropical disturbance heading northwest of Pompeii, as according to meteorologist Patrick Chan. The disturbance is trying to organize, but is expected to pass near or south of our island by late Tuesday or early Wednesday morning. Now, for those of you living on Guam, we can expect winds to increase sometime in the early part of Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we are planning to issue a gale warning for the coastal waters surrounding the Mariana Islands. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting winds uh, reaching 30 to 35 knots over the ocean with gusts to like probably 45 knots. That's very dangerous for, uh, not only for small boats, but even the larger vessels out there. Mm -hmm. So uh, we recommend them they go back to port uh, by tonight. Because, because of the uh, very strong wind, the sea will respond. So we're also expecting seas probably reaching 15 feet Mm -hmm. uh, from late tomorrow evening from Wednesday afternoon. So definitely stay off the water. Don't recommend to go to swim, even uh, along the beaches. Chan said as the tropical disturbance is expected to pass south of Guam, it may likely turn into a more of a tropical depressant or tropical storm later on. He also added that during this week for any outdoor planning, ahem, Thanksgiving cooking, it is better to move indoors. Well, a fifth informational meeting is being held right now at this hour at Liguan Elementary School in Dededo on the Guam Department of Education's standard-based grading initiative. Here's more. An effort for the Guam Department of Education to implement a system that allows teachers to grade students based on the achievement of specific standards. That is the mission behind GDOE's standard-based grading initiative. According to Deputy Superintendent Joe Sanchez, this will be a big shift in policy thinking, as the agency is changing four main policies. The first is the process teachers determine what students are graded on. Right now, uh, the policy allows for standards-based grade, but grades, but basically teachers are able to choose what they cover and 
and able to choose all the different criteria that will go into an actual grade. We want to make it consistent across the board. The second policy piece is the shift to a five-point scale versus percentage grades. So the five-point scale is basically four, three, two, one, with three being our target where if a student reaches the standard, they would receive a three. And if they go beyond the standard or excel beyond what's required, they would get a level four. And then two and one would be uh, basically trying to work up towards, towards the three, which is basically hitting the, the standard. The third policy will be a second grade that runs parallel to an academic grade that tracks behavior and work readiness skills, such as turning in work late, attendance, compliance with rules. And the last policy change is making all these grades progressive, explains Sanchez. Parents who are used to seeing a final grade during their progress report period, they're going to be surprised because sometimes you're going to see a lower grade where a student's at a level one, a level two, which in some cases right now when we're translating it may end up being a 70, 75, and they'll be surprised. What, you're only performing at a 75 level? Well, that's because the grade is meant to be progressive, where the student has an opportunity to pick the grade up over time, very similar to what people call a learning curve. As they make this transition, GDOE is seeking the community's input by holding information meetings, ultimately to conclude whether or not standard-based grading should become district-wide. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Elsewhere tonight, the struggle continues to win compensation for Guam residents exposed to radiation during U.S. Pacific nuclear testing in the Marshall Islands from 1946 through 1962. Pacific Association of Radiation Survivors President Robert Celesto gave an update this weekend at Government House in Nagana Heights on the 2019 Radiation Exposure Compensation Act now sitting before Congress. He explains what one of the top concerns is in D.C. One of the biggest things they always ask me is that how much is this going to cost? Right? That's the main thing? Yes. How much is this going to cost? <clears throat> and so that's why uh, it's very important that mm, I always say have them all. You know, it's like how many cancers you have involved? I don't know. Radiation compensation legislation first passed Congress in 1990 and it's been amended several times. Celestials fought for many years for Guam victims to be included in the. This is an amendment to the, to the bill. So, yes, you're absolutely right. Once they pass this amendment, uh, later on down the years, another group or our group can uh, ask for other cancers and, and to extend their, their years. They include Guam, CMI, uh, New Mexico, Idaho, Montana uh, in this bill. Then later on in the years, we could ask for another notice to this. But what our goal is, is to get in and, and, and compensate from 46 to 62. Celestial testified on the radiation compensation bill before the Senate Judiciary Committee this past June. And after two years in the making, a memorandum of understanding has been signed between the Guam Community College and the National Institute for International Education with the Ministry of Education of the Republic of Korea. The agreement awards GCC to host and become the official administrator of the Test of Proficiency in Korean, an acronym for TOPIC. This is the Korean government's test for the language with the head of mission for the consulate, Lim Hee Soon and GCC President Dr. Mary Okada coming together today for the signing ceremony. Okada says this advances GCC's mission to provide workforce development. As we all know, um, our culinary arts program and our hospitality and tourism programs are very reputable uh, programs here at the college, and so this helps to support our students in gaining employment and contributing to the workforce here on Guam. Lim Hee Soon added 45% of Guam's tourism is from Korea and growing. Topic testing takes off next April. Before we go to our commercial break, my friends, more tax refunds will be mailed this week. So, ringing in the holidays in the right way, about 237 have been processed to the tune of some $737,000. These include refunds that are error-free returns filed on or before June the 1st. And with that, we are going to go to our commercial break. Please stay tuned. We're back after this with sports. Every day a plus. We wouldn't have gotten four without you. Because we do everything for you. For all the conversations. For all the likes and shares. For all the fun and laughter. 
for always choosing us to provide you with the connections that you value the most. Thank you for making Docomo Pacific your most loved network four years in a row. Viva! Okay, so what are we thinking today? Oh, I just need a trim. Okay, well luckily you are in great hands. Mm -hmm. Perfect. The one dollar stylist deal. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> or you could get a real deal. McDonald's buy one get one for a dollar deal is here. Buy one of your faves and choose another for just an extra buck. Choose from the Big Mac, filet of fish quarter pounder with cheese, and 10-piece chicken McNuggets, but only for a limited time. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get you some bowling news out of the Guam Senior Bowlers Association. But first off, girls high school basketball from the JFK gym between the Islanders and Ukuru Bulldogs. Check it out. The Ukuru Bulldogs walked out of the Islanders gym with the 50-36 win behind Anjali Dakanai, who put up a game-high 26 points. Ukudu improved to 10-1 on the season with the road win. The Bulldogs held on to a slim lead at halftime, up 23-18. The Islanders got two late scores courtesy of Isabella Roberto, who helped cut into the deficit. Roberto finished the half with eight points. The Bulldogs kept feeding the ball in the paint to Dakanai, as she helped the visiting team stay ahead 32-26 heading into the fourth quarter. She had the inside game working and her short-range shots dropping in for scores. Turnovers proved costly as the home team fell to the visiting squad on their home court. Francine Valena played tough on both ends of the ball, pulling down rebounds and putting back shots. Swing player Anzlai Sarsileo got some quality time on the court for JFK with two hard finishes at the basket. Isabella Roberto finished the game with a team-high 10 points. Teammate Jada Hahn was the second leading scorer, putting up seven. Vanessa Castillo scored seven points for the Bulldogs, while Raquel Camacho also contributed. Camacho distributed the ball and knocked down shots from the outside when she was left open. The Bulldogs followed up with the win over the Simon Sanchez Sharks and will next play the Teason High Titans on Tuesday at 7 p.m. In bowling news, 8th seed Tony Sobervilla ended the final senior monthly tournament for 2019 in the same manner as he did in the first on top. Sobervilla threw strikes with great frequency in all of his matches, including the big upset over top seed Jim Panala in two straight matches to become the Guam Senior Bowlers Association Senior Bowler of the Month for November. The championship round is first to two wins in a three-game format. Sober Villa took the first game 246 to 221. The strike fest continued in the second game as Sober Villa hit a barrage of strikes to claim the title with a 262 to 208 for the win. It is the spirit within us, our soul, our essence that drives us to seek a better way, to create beauty and enrich the senses, to inspire fulfilling lives, to be at one with our earth and protect those who we love. Only by taking on challenges do we change the world for the better.
Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Howdy, folks. I'll never forget that fateful day. I was having a lovely ride with my KFC biscuits when... Boom! An easily avoidable accident resulted in a collision of flavors that became my most delicious creation yet. New KFC Cinnabon Dessert Biscuits. Get it with every 12-piece meal. KFC, it's finger licking good. Without further ado, here are tonight's birthday shoutouts. All right, everybody, happy birthday to Gina Wustig, coming from Sean, Tammy, and Holden. Also, a happy birthday to Claire Menno. Happy birthday, Auntie Claire, from Oliver and Levi. They say you are the best auntie ever. William Gay III, aka Billy, happy birthday to my son and enjoy your day. This comes from your mom and your sisters. It is a happy birthday for Jaden, and your friends and family say we hope you had a wonderful birthday. Keep working towards your goals and dreams. God bless you, and we love you. Happy birthday number two to Adi Ray Leongaro Rosario, to mommy, daddy, and your entire family who all send their utmost love. Norbert and Eliciana Castro, happy birthday to the both of you, and dad says, love and miss you all. And finally, happy birthday from all of the brothers to Gordon Wright. Happy birthday. We wish you the very best, and take care. All right, everybody, stay tuned. Chris Barnett and friends are up next with the after party. Good evening, Guam, and welcome to the after party for the uh, On Leave Serena Sauce Matson.